Hi, Stacy with Stalking Horse here. So today we're going to talk about why risk adjustment is important. So there may be many of you out there that are thinking about getting your CRC or your Certified Risk Adjustment Coder Certification, or some providers out there that are wondering why you're hearing about risk adjustment or maybe why your uh, company is getting into risk adjustment. And so we're going to just touch on why it's important and what it means for all of us. So stay tuned to hear all about why risk adjustment is important. Welcome back. So we're going to talk about why risk adjustment is important. And so um, really it's important on, on both sides and risk adjustment is really growing. So it's important on the coding side for those getting into the career and it's important on the provider side because it affects how uh, providers are measured for quality and efficiency and um, how their documentation actually uh, is, is playing out or how it holds up. And so really what it does is it focuses us in on ICD-10 coding or ICD-10-CM clinical modification, so those diagnosis codes. So for those in coding, um, thinking about getting into risk adjustment, it really, again, takes out some of those other code sets. It takes out the CPT, takes out the HICSPIX, and takes out ICD-10-PCS. It really just focuses in on diagnosis coding and guidelines around it and um, getting all of the diagnoses uh, addressed, coded out appropriately, specificity. And so for providers, what that means is, you know, d learning to document to that highest level of specificity, which actually can be very challenging because providers hear that all the time. You know, be more specific, be more specific. But if you don't know what you're supposed to be specific about, then you can't really be successful because you may be feeling or thinking that I am being specific. This was specific. So if you don't know how the coding is structured, how ICD-10 works, you may not realize what they mean by being specific. So when we actually code those ICD-10s and translate you know, your documentation into a code, that goes out on claims. And those claims, that data is you know, sent out to insurances but that data is used for many different things. Um, I, I think I used this analogy before, but if we think about the pandemic that's going on right now, um, COVID-19, how do we think that they're getting all of those numbers, right? For those that are infected, for those that are hospitalized, for those that are um, on ventilators, and unfortunately for those who are passing from COVID, it's all from ICD-10, from diagnosis coding. So they take that information and they use it for many different things. Now, one of the things that they use it for is risk adjustment. So risk adjustment is actually a tool that is used by uh, people called actuaries. So it's a profession where they analyze financial risk. And so uh, in healthcare, they use ICD-10 codes within a risk adjustment model to predict future cost um, of care for patients. So if you think about things also that you may have heard, like how much it costs uh, to take care of the average diabetic patient, or how much it costs to take care of somebody with CHF, or um, you know someone with COPD, how much those medications are. So again, they use all these diagnosis codes to figure out cost of care for different things. So what ends up happening is that when, um, for a particular provider, when those diagnoses are sent in, they can form like a case mix index on that uh, population of patients that's attributed to that particular provider. And they can look at that information and say, well, based on these diagnoses, so this picture, uh, we can use risk adjustment and predict that these patients should cost, you know, however much, X amount of dollars. So then they take what, how much it should cost, and then they look at how much it actually ended up costing. So if it should cost $5,000, but it ended up costing $10,000, then they're saying, well, if it only should have cost 5,000, why did it cost 10? So that's, 
you know, not good quality of care. So they really look at that as a measurement for quality and they use those risk adjustment numbers to set your benchmarks, right? So um, it, it, when you get into certain insurance plans and whatnot, they take like claims data and information and they set benchmarks for your um, cost. And so what we are reporting in is super impactful. So even from the ICD-10 perspective, it used to be that we just used to think about CPT because CPT is where the money was connected to, but believe it or not, uh, there's money connected to diagnosis codes, but um, it's either if you're in a risk adjustment model and you're being paid that way, yes, that obviously is affecting your, your money, but also from quality, from a quality perspective, it can affect you as well. So, you know, understanding that the data that we submit in, so coding is actually really important. So your diagnosis coding is, is very important. It, it factors into your benchmarking, your quality scores. And so we wanna make sure again, that we're actually coding as accurate and as specific as possible. And so if you need help with this, please feel free to reach out to us here at Stalking Horse. We work a lot in risk adjustment and we can certainly help you. So stalkinghorsellc.com, you can comment below. Also, if you have any questions, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you can get these weekly videos. Hopefully you found this helpful. And again, feel free to reach out to Stalking Horse with any of your risk adjustment needs. Just remember, you heard it straight from the horse's mouth.